Today, what I'm going to do is start by looking at these objects that are arrayed on my piano and begin drawing them from the, the center out. And um, yesterday I did a demo going from left to right and non-dominant hand, dominant hand. Today, I'm gonna to try looking at these same objects exactly as they were and beginning in the middle. Why not? Let's see what happens. So I'm using a Sharpie pen on just a sketchbook and I'm doing a traditional contour line where I begin with an object and I'm slowly looking at the object as I go up and around and down to where it hits the next object. And then I'm following that line as it comes in and back around to my original object as it curves under, hits the table or the surface of the piano and then comes back up. So this is actually going a little bit beyond where I started. So I'm just gonna adjust course and then pick up and go back over to where I began that second shape, the shape of the curve of that second lemon, which is a little lower than the first one, a little closer to me. And now I'm following the stem as it curves up and over and then following it as it comes back down. So as I go along doing this drawing, each time I hit another object, I'm just going to follow it as it informs the shape of my primary object. Now I'm coming back down to that spot where the lemon hits the table, curves back around. I'm catching up with my first mark. And I'm gonna pause here and just put in a little indentation, a little inner contour line that shows where there's a, a little bit of a new shape within the primary shape. I'm gonna pick up here and follow that third lemon, the third lemon that's behind the central lemon. So from my perspective, the, that lemon has a lot more height than the other two. That curves around and hits the blue vase and then is interrupted by this stem which comes down and then immediately hits another stem, which curves back up and over. So that stem now becomes my path and it is connected to a leaf and the leaf comes down and curves over the edge of the table, the piano, and hits back here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and put that line in while I'm on it. And then I'm coming back to the leaf and it flares out, comes up and over and then comes back in. And there's a little bit of detail in there that I'll add in. I see the curve of the leaf there. It's a little bit of a shadow line there and then move back to following the stem back up and over. And then that reconnects to the third lemon. So now I have this cluster of lemons that are existing together spatially. This one is coming forward. This one is set back behind it. And this third one is even further back. And I will resume where, where next? I think I'll go up with that. I'll go over to the, the blue pot. So I'm gonna follow this line as it curves to the left goes up and then over and then up and around and down and over. And I'm looking back down at my paper as I draw. So I'm looking at the object, I'm looking at the, the paper, I'm adjusting if I feel like I'm running into trouble and I'm coming down now the side of this apple. And up and over and back into the center of that. And then I'm going to pick up right here and follow the apple, second apple, move back down. And I kind of overestimated 
one of those shapes. These are a little bit too big and they're not quite as low as they need to be to hit that line. But I'll go ahead and leave that as is. Just notice and move on. And then I'm coming in here and making an adjustment up here. That's putting in a little bit of that interior interiority of the line. And another line here that is an ellipse that gives me a bit more of that shape. And I'm going to now circle back to where my lemons overlap the tall vase in the center and pick up from where that is happening. So it's just right behind the stem. It comes right up just like so. It goes up. And then it begins to curve in. And then it goes up. And it flares out. It goes over and then it comes back down. And I have now this left side to kind of mirror as I'm coming back down behind the vase. And that's uh, helpful to getting this to feel symmetrical. Moving over to the right side, I see on the right side of the vase is a little tiny shape back there. It goes, that goes up, out, cross to an angle, back in, and then down. And then it hits top of the green vase, which curves all the way around and touches the blue vase, comes up behind that apple, comes around the apple and stops for or the apple stops. So the line it's sitting on is further back. And that comes around to the right, goes up, and then flares out and off the page. So I'm going to leave that off the page, come back to here, following that line in, that curve in, and then up, and then out, and around the back. So there's this inside shape I'm following and move back across the surface to where these lemons now are going to moving from right to left and I'm going to move from this left hand lemon about maybe a quarter of the way into the lemon's body from the left is the beginning of that green base, which goes to the right at an angle, up, flares out a little, comes to about here, and then curves around. And then comes down. And then it has all these little interesting and intricate little shapes that are the shapes of the top of the teapot. And hits the edge of the handle and then continues on down around the form of the teapot. And I'm not really drawing the teapot exactly. I'm drawing the shape of the green vase, the green, the green whatever it is. Adding in the ellipse adding in this ellipse here that I see. And now I have these shapes that describe that green vessel. And now I will continue from the right to the left, following the teapot now down, around, up, And now I'm getting into the territory of its spout. And what connects to that little area where the handle sits inside of that shape and connects to the handle on the other side. So this is an interior shape inside of the shape of the teapot that I'm describing. And 
And I go back in and find those little lines that tell me that's a teapot, that's a snout. Here's the ellipse of the line that was that little bump at the bottom of the teapot. And now sneaking up behind the teapot, kind of finding, looking, the lemon hits about here on my page. And then the blue jar is a little bit further back behind the teapot. So I'm noticing that. I'm, I'm making sure I'm placing my cobalt jar back far enough, hopefully. And coming up, that jar goes in and then out and around and hits the snout of the teapot. And then I'm adding in the ellipses that describe the interior of that shape. And now I'm following the green jar right behind the cobalt jar. It goes up and around and up and around and down and around and down. And I think I've made this a bit too small. So I'm going to actually restart that line. because I know it comes down lower into the body of that jar. Well, there you go. We'll just leave it basically as it is. Adding in the ellipse here and here, and then moving over to where this attaches to or connects to visually the shape of the yellow cup. And that isn't quite touching. And that comes down at a slight angle curves in, comes down, goes across, and then adding in this ellipse here that is that, the mouth of the cup and this ellipse here. And then I'm coming back to where I had my line, which is the edge of the piano tucking behind that leaf. And that comes along under the objects and goes all the way across the table. Okay. So we're here we have this world of objects that are more or less in proportion and in relationship to each other. And there's one more line I wanna add, which is the back of the lid of the piano hits the backboard about here. So I'm gonna bring that behind those objects and find the line where it would be here. And I'm noticing that that line needs to come down where the base narrows. And then it's hidden behind these other objects over here. But that line is really important. So when I make a painting from this, or I'm just looking at this as a drawing, that line is grounding me in this flat rectangle that holds up all these objects. And then the, the lip of the edge, which is falling away. And we have basically these three rectangles of space behind the scene supporting all of the activity of what's going on here. And I can look in here and see um, errors that I made or proportional shifts that I didn't catch on to. I can add in a few elements that will describe some of those interior shapes better. But I'm just gonna let this be my drawing warm up, and then I'm going to do another one using my left hand. And I'm gonna do this the same, I'm gonna do this in a similar way. I am going to draw a square first that is going to basically give me the parameters of my drawing that is visible, should be visible by the camera. And then I'm gonna start with my left hand. And this time I'm gonna start, um, well, let's see, maybe I'll just start as I did before with the, with the, well, no, I think I'll start on the left. My, my left hand says it wants to start on the left. So I'm gonna move across looking at that yellow cup as it comes down to here, adding in that line. So I'm not left-handed. So this is my non-dominant hand. It's the hand I don't draw with, I don't write with. And it is going to be asked to do the same task I just did with my 
dominant hand. And we're just gonna see how it goes. And I'm just curious, like, how are you gonna do today with this assignment? And I often find that my non-dominant hand is um, kind of has a mind of it, its own. It, it kind of wants to move a little bit more quickly. It makes decisions a little bit more quickly. Not necessarily writer, but it has more of a sort of an authority or a confidence. And it's sort of like, I'm just trying to catch up with it as it goes along. So um, I'm noticing that I wanna come down a little lower to get that bottom in, come up. And now I've got the snout detail to add and the shape of the handle to add. And all of these things seem to me uh, to be moving along a little bit more quickly than they did the other way around. It's also very common to sort of start losing your, my ability to use words to describe what I'm doing. So doing a demo using the left hand or the non-dominant hand can get problematic because your ability to find words may kind of go out the window. And that's because the, the, the spatial understanding that is coming through this exercise, that's kind of what we're cultivating, isn't a word space. It's really spatial and nonverbal. So it may be that the drawing picks up with a bit of alacrity and the words don't, which is fine. So I'm continuing the same exact process, except I'm using my non-dominant hand and I'm following the shapes, adding in the little interior lines that describe them and give them a little bit more of a sense of what they are taking them beyond just being orbs and turning them into lemons from the garden with stems and leaves and all that. And just trying to find those angles and noticing what goes up, where it goes in, where it goes up, where it goes out, where it goes around, where it comes back in. Getting that blue cobalt jar, which now circles around and tucks in behind the lemons, comes over and hits the apples. So what's beautiful to me about this exercise is that it's all about the line. And as someone who is always kind of excited about color, and I'm looking at these delicious apples and all their color, wanting to get into that. I'm, I'm really enjoying the deliciousness of their line instead of allowing myself to just kind of fall into the trance of color. And staying in the line space is actually really kind of cool because the structure of line gives us this beautiful playground to play with color and pattern in. And it's really unusual to spend this much time, that much time just working with line. I often you know, get my drawing down and jump into the painting and that's where I spend most of my energy. And so today kind of deciding to let the drawing exercises rule and seeing how they work out is really fun. And it makes me feel like, gosh, I'd like to do a lot more of this. And so I, I really recommend for my students and for myself to spend more time drawing and to give drawing, even if drawing isn't going to be a visible element in your repertoire, in your art repertoire, it's a beautiful practice 
for sinking into the moment and being in a more of a grounded and contemplative space, it will strengthen your work. It's probably the number one activity that will strengthen your ability to, to paint well of anything you can do because it just brings your hand and your heart into and your brain into a place where they are working together, they're creating together. And it's just such a, a great thing to do. And it's a scary thing to do because we end up feeling like we're not, we start off feeling afraid or we're not very good at drawing or we're not, we're not good enough to do this or I suck at that or that's not the way it is or oh my God, it's so wonky. And this kind of terrible conversation can reign in your brain that's just prohibiting you from getting into it and even trying at all. But really, this is one of those areas where there's really nothing to be afraid of because nothing bad will happen to you if you sit down for 10 minutes and do a little drawing. And your drawing is just an expression of you right now in this moment in this level of ability to capture what you see. That's all it is. It's nothing more and it's nothing less. So you draw like you draw and you draw today the way you draw today. Tomorrow, it may be very different. And yesterday, it may have been very different. And the more you do it, the more familiar you become with the objects you're drawing and the things that you're working with artistically. You are developing a relationship with these objects and line is a beautiful way to develop that relationship and strengthen every other skill you have. Your observation, your ability to sink into this moment. And it's something you can put a little sketchbook in your purse or your pocket or your briefcase and carry with you wherever you go and spending 10 minutes a day, just 10 minutes a day, drawing, whatever, drawing your coffee cup every morning, drawing the guy sitting across from you in the airport who's on his cell phone, drawing what you see out your window, just the simple shapes, the simple relationships, using a pen so you can't erase it and you can't fuss with it, just letting it be what it is. So that ink goes down and it's unchangeable. Maybe you add a different line or change it and you notice, okay, it's a little wonky, great. Who isn't, right? So um, I hope you enjoyed this, this uh, drawing morning with me and that it inspires you to do a little drawing for yourself. And I'm gonna go back now and keep on going. Maybe make a little painting from this.